the finals of the 37th edition of the Copa America. Join us as we relive the finals between Uruguay and Brazil next on Gold TV. Hello, everyone. The date was July 22nd, 1995. The venue, the famed Centenario Stadium in Montevideo, Uruguay. I'm glad you could be with us to relive a moment in a history, a classic matchup between Uruguay and Brazil. Alongside Rafa Insane, I'm Kelly Odano. We step back in time to enjoy this match between two of the Comebol Giants. In fact, this was a familiar scene in the 80s and 90s. Uruguay and Brazil facing off in the Copa America title. In fact, this was the third time in six Copa Americas that these two teams met in the championship. And the world champs, Brazil, coached by Mario Lobo Zagallo, taking on Uruguay. Old coach by Hector Nunez, Uruguay at home trying to clinch another Copa America for them. The lineup for this match, then goal for Uruguay, Fernando Alves, Gustavo Mendes, Jose Herrera, Eber Moas, and Tabaret Silva in the back line. Gustavo Poyer, Alvaro Gutierrez holding, Diego Dorta, Enzo Francesco Lee creating behind Marcelo Otero, and Daniel Fonseca, number nine, for coach Hector Nunez. Starting 11 for Nunez at home at Centenario. Let's see who Lobo Zagallo brings onto the pitch. This legendary stadium, it's Claudio Taffarelli in goal, Jorginho Aldair, Andre Cruz, Roberto Carlos, and Dunga, Cesar Sampaio, Juninho and Zinho. Up front, the animal, Edgimundo, next to Tulio. Uruguay beat Brazil in the 83 Copa America final. Brazil returned the favor in 1989. In 95, essentially the rubber match of this series. How did it turn out? We'll get to the kickoff next on Goal TV. We've taken a step back in time to relive the 1995 Copa America final between Uruguay and Brazil. Uruguay looking for their 14th Copa America championship and doing so. It would tie Argentina for the most ever championships won in South America. Brazil looking for their fifth Copa America title. Of course, Brazil in yellow moving from right to left at Centenario Stadium in Montevideo. So, and this is the summer of 95. Remember, in the summer of 94, Brazil clinched their fourth title. And Coach Barreira and the assistant was Mario Lobo Zagallo, who's now taken over the national team, made a few changes. And in the back line, Andre Cruz, number 14, who was playing for Napoli, very talented left footer, central defender. And Roberto Carlos, starting in the back line for Brazil, replacing Leonardo. Uh, also, Juninho Paulista with number 10, earned a start in this lineup for Brazil. There you have Zinho, who's playing right now in the usl with miami fc there he was playing in japan after the world cup in 94 a lot of players from brazil went to japan senior just celebrated his 40th birthday within the last week there's a young juninho debuted for brazil in a friendly in london against England. So 1-3-0. So Claudio Tafarel is the goalkeeper. He was still playing in Brazil before traveling to Italy, play for Parma in Serie A. He was playing for Atletico Mineiro. Uh, right back, Jorginho, who had still Cafu on the bench, was playing in Japan. Aldair, the veteran, played until he was 40 years old for Roma. Andre Cruz and Roberto Carlos, the back line. Midfield holding Cesar Sampaio with number five and Dunga. You see the young Roberto Carlos. Dunga, the coach uh, today for Brazil. Zinho and Juninho, the playmakers. The animal Legimundo with number seven with center forward Tulio. Now for Uruguay, coached by Hector Nunez, a veteran coach who made most of his career coach in Spain, had Fernando Alves in goal. Right back, Gustavo Mendes. In the middle, Jose Herrera, who played for Cagliari. Jose Herrera, by the way, played right back. He was switched to sweeper later on in this tournament by Nunez. Eber Moas is the other central defender. Tavares Silva, the left back. Holding in midfield, Gutierrez, number five, and Poyet, number 11. Dorta and Francesco Lee creating behind Fonseca, number nine, who were playing for Roma. He ended up in uh, Juventus later on. 
with number seven, Marcelo Otero. There you have Marcelo Otero asking for the ball. Ball set inside the area, but it's Caparral sprinting off of his line to collect quickly outlets to the far touchline. Aaron pass intercepted by Uruguay, but quickly taken back and out contact. And the first foul of the match comes in the fourth minute. That's very good. And by the way, Arturo Bricio Carter is the referee from Mexico. He's assisted by Bomer Ferro from Ecuador and Adrian Gomez from Venezuela. Right it through inside the area near the end line. Not much room to operate. It's touched off and it will be a corner kick for Brazil. It's interesting. It's late winter in Uruguay in, in July. Brazilians should be colder or in short sleeves. <laughs> Zinho to supply from the quarter. And Swinger popped in the air by Alves, who the keeper was fouled. On the bench for Uruguay, you have players like Ruben Sosa, who was a playmaker for Inter Milan. And Marcelo Saralegui, who's a midfielder for Racing Avellaneda. Rubén Da Silva, center forward for Boca Juniors, the famous Poliguita. And Pablo Bengochea, the maestro for Peñarol on the bench for Nunez and Uruguay. Zinho, defended by two, touched out of bounds by Adenolfi. For Brazil, Gadida, the backup keeper, for example, Savio on the bench, and nonetheless, and Ronaldo on the bench. Uh oh, here we go. But Don Carlos, the man that suffered the foul, Mendez involved. Carlos hot under the collar, being settled down by a number of teammates. Cesar Sampaio among them. It's Herrera. Who hit it Mundo very hard and what a very strong tackle both ways. Herreras and look at Roberto Carlos coming in. Oh, we did it. <laughs> coming in very strong. Should have been booked by Brizio Carter. Yeah, he wrote him down. Roberto Carlos got booked by Brizio Carter. mentioned Ronaldo on the bench for Brazil just 18 years old when this match was being played back before the phenomenon became the phenom. The veteran coach Sagalo he's every time Brazil wins a title you gotta find him he's involved he somehow. Was there he's somehow. the coach he's the assistant he's a player or he's something but he's there sitting on the bench. Mario Lobo Sagalo what a story. In fact he's the first Footballer to win the World Cup as a player, did it twice as a coach and as an assistant coach, of course, with Brazil every time. And most of the times, Parreira is involved. For, for example, in 1970, people forget Carlos Parreira was the physical strength coach uh -huh. for Brazil when Mario Sagallo was the coach. Then it switched in 94. It was assistant Sagallo for Parreira, and they did it again in 98. It's incredible. I think 98 is the only time he hasn't won it. Tagalo when he's uh -huh. been involved and he was close he made it to the final knocked away by Herrera good misdirection finding space out on the flank Juninho drifting ahead looking for the service to instead Brazil protecting the ball they drop it back in their own half and Another confrontation as the Mexican official Arturo Carter has to intervene. Well, of course, the leader of this team, Dunga, always with that haircut, military style. <laughs> he still looks exactly the same as he used to when he was a player. Yeah, I, I get the feeling Dunga has never had a drink of alcohol in his life. You know what right. I mean? It's that kind of, he's, uh -huh. he's like a, the perfect footballer. 50 push ups every night oh, before every he goes night to sleep. Before going to sleep. <laughs> and then when he wakes up, another 100. <laughs> and he still looks like he still could play. 
I was surprised, number seven, Marcelo Otero, earning a starting job for Hector Nunez. Where I thought Rubén da Silva was going to be the starter. And Brazil came out of Group B in this Copa America where they had to face Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru. And Uruguay was in Group A alongside Mexico, Paraguay, and Venezuela. Look at Roberto Carlos again. Now against Gustavo Mendes, the right back. A slashing effort to win possession, slid through inside the area, pulled across the mouth of the goal and touched off for a corner kick. That was Enzo Francesco, he's still in the ball and run away, pushing forward, getting into the A team. And the cross cleared by Andre Cruz with his right foot, he's a lefty. Andre Cruz, very talented center back. Reminds me of Edinho in 82, same style. Shallow kick, knocked outside the area, but tracked down by Francescoli. Knocks the ball square, shows in support, back for Enzo. Trying to dodge a pair of yellow jerseys, sticks with it, down he goes. And gets the call, Enzo fouled by Dunga. Dunga and Zinho closing down on the talented Francescoli. He was going to get past them, and Dunga says, no way. <laughs> Francescoli putting the ball near the penalty spot. Had it off frame. Now goal kick to Brazil as we reach the end of the 10th minute of play. And, uh, Coach Nunez for Uruguay, Hector Nunez, born in 1936. Played for Nacional of Uruguay most of his career. But he also played in Spain for Valencia. He's a right winger. Won two UEFA Cups playing for Valencia. Admundo slips by his marker. He's roaming free, bending with the outside of his right foot. Roberto Carlos tries to get fancy with the outside of his right. And it's out for a quarter. It's Edmundo beating Gustavo Mendes, sending the cross in, looking for Tulio. But it's Roberto Carlos who becomes a left winger most of his time, especially as young as, as he was back then. <laughs> Juninho from the corner, sailing it to the back side of the six, where it's snatched by Alves. Quick outlet. And now a foot race across midfield. He's got wheels, touches it square. Difficult pass to complete. And Brazil there to intercept. Definitely Ortero with good pace, but he rushed that cross. Three players closing in on Fonseca. Tulio touching a square, now looks to get on the other end of it, and it's Tulio pushing off and charged with the foul. And there you saw Jose Herrera, I mentioned he began this tournament as a right back. It was sent to the middle. He's very good closing in, playing as a sweeper also. There he fouled, or he was fouled by Tulio, the center forward for Brazil. Tulio scored in the 81st minute of Brazil's quarterfinal match against Argentina. Five days before this championship match, it came in the 81st minute in a 2-1 game with Argentina in front. It was the equalizer. The match went to penalties. Brazil won, denying Argentina a chance to repeat as Copa America champions after winning the title in 1993 over Mexico 2-1. But the controversy came in the way Tulio scored his goal, went off of his hand uncalled by the officials and still many Argentines will gripe over that blown call as Tulio was able to lead Brazil to the penalty shootout and now on into the finals. And they had to attend uh, Jose Herrera stayed on the ground for a while. Herrera was playing for Cagliari in Italy back then. Tulio for Botafogo in Rio de Janeiro. A chance for the service. It comes in innocently on the turf. Quickly cleared by Brazil. Tulio at option square. Instead, they'll try and 
claw their way down the touchline. And Carter will give the free kick to Brazil. Two number tens tangling. There's Roberto Carlos. Here's Zinho. Back to Roberto Carlos playing with Zinho still. Dancing around Moss. Roberto Carlos slicing the ball inside the box. Elbows flying, very intense. Not a good match technically, but it's the pitch that's not helping. It's very soft. I remember it's late winter in Uruguay. With Poyet goes very strong against Dunga. Poyet, who was playing in Spain back then, ended up playing in the Premiership. He was playing for Real Zaragoza back then. Roberto Carlos backing up with the left foot, blasting it right through the two-man wall. Shut down near the penalty spot on re-entry back near the 12-yard marker. Now Ooh. a chance to tuck it outside of the area. Daring move inside the box, but Uruguay now gets their chance to clear. For Francesco Lee, hits it back for his time, going to Uruguay. Again, Roberto Carlos involved. Going against Mendes, the right back. Gets the ball, but so intense, as usual, the intensity of Roberto Carlos. But they arrived, arrived in uh, Turkey, and for Fenerbahce. This pass intercepted. What a reception in Istanbul for a rival of Roberto Carlos. Very impressive. He arrives as a champion after leaving Real Madrid on a high note. And he'll be coached by Zico, another legend from Brazil. Brazil again trying to operate down the far flank. It was Jorginho who rushed that one. I mentioned after winning World Cup 94, a lot of players from Brazil went to the J League. And had began, and of course, Jorginho ended up at Kashima Antlers. Ronaldo, the original Ronaldo, the big central defender, ended up at uh, Shimizu S. Pulse. Cesar Sampaio from Yokohama Flugels. Dunga and Jubilo Iwata. Uh, Zinho and Yokohama Flugels. So, oh, no, Leonardo Kashima Antlers, great start to the J League back then. I mean, very talented players. Woke up. Winners behind Lobo Zagallo. He was one of the first left wingers who dropped to midfield, changing for a three starters, throwing a three strikers to a 4 4 2 uh -huh. back in 58. Following attack. Out for a throw. You mentioned Brazil's triumph in the 94 World Cup. The United States, it's interesting, in the round of 16 at the 94 World Cup, Brazil faced the U.S. They won that game 1 0. That was the game where Leonardo elbowed Tom Ramos and fractured his skull. Well, the two teams met in this tournament just a year later in the semifinals, and Brazil won by the same score 1 0. Mundo pushes it wide. Back. Tries to thread it through. And a whistle kills the play. I doubt it. I don't think Tulio was offside. Good ball movement as usually from Brazil. Attacking with numbers. And with one touch. Spreading those defenders from Uruguay. It was Edmundo involved. Then it was Zinho. They got that pass from Zinho. He's not offside. Edmundo is. Back then he, they might have called Edmundo offside. That's true. Lifted over the defense. Corral just between the lines. Touches square. Now looks to knock it inside the area. Walked outside the box and played into touch. It's 
It's weird to see Roberto Carlos with that little afro of his. I've seen about 10 years without any hair. And that is for Otero. Well shielded by Roberto Carlos. The top scorer in this Copa America was Batistuta. We'll be playing the Copa America in Venezuela 07. Four goals scored by Batistuta, same as Luis Garcia, the Mexican ex Atletico Madrid. Argentine Balbo scored three, Tulio scored three, Freddy Rincon for Colombia three, Otero Uruguay also three, and Eric Winalda scored three goals in that Copa America. Very impressive tournament by the United States playing in the Copa America for the second time. They competed in the 93 edition and finished dead last. 12 out of 12 teams then rebounded in 95. They were placed in Group C along with Argentina and shocked everyone by defeating Argentina three to nothing on the final match day of group play. Argentina with a mixed lineup, but still they had Batistuta starting, for example. Mm -hmm. They were surprised by the Americans who, who learned a lot from 93 to 95. Yeah. A lot. That learning curve was impressive. <laughs> back for Tapara. So the Copa America is the oldest international soccer tournament in the world. The first edition in 1916. We only played six matches. Organized for by Argentina. It was more of an invitational tournament. It's Herrera and Roberto Carlos still going at it. Like that also you used to play every two years, which changes to now every four years. Zinho plays it ahead. This is Juninho looking for his target man. Tulio knocked down the ball into the hands of Alves. You can play through the Tulio. Would have been booked for that. Benicio Carter says no, no, no. Brazil pushing ahead once more. Admundo. And the door slammed shut on Admundo's attempt. But out now for Zinho. Heavy touch. Puts himself in danger, but does well to recover, and it's all the way back for his keeper. Sampaio knows his position. A heavy touch, not helped by the pitch, but still protected the ball. Not allowing Uruguay to recover there would, would have been very dangerous. Great change of pace. Defender scrambling back. Here's an opportunity. Tug through and knocked off for a quarter. Gimundo back then was playing for Flamengo. He went to later on, he played with Batistuta and Fiorentina. Great interception. Uruguay looking to move the ball in a hurry. Rapidly across midfield. Man who's stuck in his foot. Complicating matters in possession back for Brazil. Great vision from Roberto Carlos hitting Edmundo. Patience from Edmundo waits for Tulio. A wave of yellow jerseys inside the area for Brazil. Still a developing situation, oh. and now the flag is in the air. Once again, Juninho, I don't think it's offside. Uh, assistant says it's in, in the near side where the offside happened. Two other players were offside, not Juninho Paulista. A mistake by uh, Jorginho cutting to the middle instead of taking a shot. And the defenders were retreating. What a beautiful view there of Montevideo. There's Juninho. Instead of taking a shot, he cuts to the left and they close him down. So next Copa America, we'll be watching 
Next, at the end of this month, we'll be playing in Venezuela, which is the only country that had never hosted the Copa America yeah. until this summer. And still the only country in South America without playing a World Cup. In fact, they've never advanced out of group play in the Copa America. But considering they're playing at home, drawn into a relatively easy group. Certainly you have to consider that they have a decent chance to make it to the quarterfinals this time around. Well, Argentina had hosted Copa America eight times. None for Venezuela until now. Shot well over the top of the bar. Mentioned Uruguay looking for their 14th title. Argentina has 14. Brazil only six. Paraguay and Peru with two. Bolivia and Colombia with one, which they hosted. That's when they won it. Right. Slipping back into his poop. There's an impressive record for Uruguay in Copa Americas. They're undefeated at home in Copa Americas. 38 matches, no losses. Winning 31, drawing seven, including this one. Much of that has to do with Uruguay playing in this stadium where historically the national team has been almost invincible in Centenario. Until the last couple of uh, qualifiers where mm -hmm. Venezuela surprised them. Yeah. Yep. Believe it or not. They lost here in Montevideo to Venezuela in the last qualifiers. Scored sound for South Bayou. So much history and so many stories in the Copa America. For example, longest match in Copa America, it's the final between Brazil and Uruguay in 1919. 150 minutes. 90 in the regular time, two extra times for 30 minutes. <laughs> Brazil won that one to nothing. After finally getting a goal. When you have to imagine the players were crawling by the time the match finally came to its conclusion. And back then, really, there were no substitutions, <laughs> no cards, right? Nothing. Just keep playing till you drop that. <laughs> Good touch back over the top for Francesca. Ropes it in, dodges a trio of defenders, finds support. Good ball movement now from Uruguay. Fonseca, light off for Fonseca. Only touch from Juninho, back for number 10. Turning the corner is Edmundo. He's ripped to the carpet, and that draws the attention of Arturo Carter. Free kick for Brazil. And the animal loses his patience waiting up front. He drops to midfield, and they know better. They cannot let him start from midfield. If he starts <laughs> dribbling, he'll uh -huh. continue. Uh -huh. and, and he harder to stop him later on <laughs> but right away they slow him down it's a great stick his battle wages right on the center stripe but the foul is going to go against Juninho well started stepping the ball interesting how hard Juninho is working in midfield where he's trying to earn a spot, although he had earned it. He's been the starter right, since after the World Cup 94. But still, showing Mario Zagallo, he can trust him. Only 22 years old when this match was played. Zinho. Though Carlos directing traffic from the back, taking his time, picking out his captain, Dunga. Now the ball checks up 
Dunga's pass a bit unlucky, but is still corralled by Edmundo. He was flying inside the area, but play continues. Dunga to intercept. Always a great vision by Dunga and the talent from Roberto Carlos. Yeah. Yeah. Always sure enough. <laughs> Why not? He's yeah. got it. Here's Juninho. Turns and faces the target, has some help in front, tries to hook up with Tulio. Tiana streaking down the far touchline. Nobody able to close him down. The service comes in too easy in the header into the open arms of Tafarel. Well, wow, number five, Alvaro Gutierrez, he was playing for Nacional in Montevideo back then, comes out of the hole, the defensive mid. Beautiful cross for Fonseca, who heads it straight into Tafarel's hands. First chance for Uruguay, the best in the 29th. There's Evermos. Again, not allowing Ejimundo any comfort, and Nunez screaming at his players, who thinks he sh should have scored already. And Zagallo is furious they allowed Fonseca that header in the small box almost. It's Zagallo, look at him. <laughs> so intense. <laughs> he lives the game, he loves the game. Over at the comes. Does well to elude the defender and hit Juninho. Off the chest of Edmundo. It's back for Edmundo. Oh, and a pass into the little box and touched in by Tulio. In the 30th minute, great combination, and it's Edgimundo who beats a defender, sends the ball in. And Alves stays on the ground. Edgimundo with the assist and Tulio with the goal. Could have been a handball also. So it's 1 0 for Brazil, who they're playing a little bit better. And Uruguay. Beats Tabare Silva to that ball. With Zinho involved again with Edgimundo, give and go. It's hard to tell. He may have gotten that one squarely off the chest, unlike the goal that was scored in the quarterfinals against Argentina. Alves asking for help, the goalkeeper, who came off his line. Did not expect Edgimundo to send that cross towards Tulio. Third goal of the tournament for Tulio. <laughs> Very brave Brazilian fans at Centenario. <laughs> this angle no. we've seen it what ten know. times, ten still times. Sure, right right right, right. <laughs> but just as Agallo was getting animated on the sideline as you mentioned somewhat frustrated they hadn't scored yet on cue Tulio at the half an hour mark and Brazil scores the opener of the 1995 Copa America final. Nunez is warming up a couple of players already for Uruguay. Player down on the pitch, stretched out. Looks like Sabare Silva, the left back. Oh, that's who they're showing us now. There, he might have injured his left knee. Not clear. Really? Nino booked by Brizio Carter, a foul against Francesco. It's hard to tell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can get a better look at it than Great that. Great effort, guys, but we yeah. still can't make up my mind. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. Drifting away from the target, couldn't get enough power on it as 
Coutinho is officially booked. Uruguay holds a, an interesting record. It's the only team they have a positive head-to-head -head against all of the South American nations oh. in Copa America. Very interesting. Yeah. Of course, the Uruguayans won the Olympics in 30 and 34. They start winning everything. They won the World Cups in 24 and 28, the Olympics are. Right. The World right. Cup in 30. First one they hosted at home, they won it. So they began very early yep. <laughs> winning everything. And that victory in the 30 World Cup, the first World Cup, this stadium. Yep. First final played here. 4 to 2, the final score. Uruguay beat Argentina. The USA finished third in that World Cup. Okay, it's Adinolfi will be coming in for Tabare Silva, left back. Change for Nunez, and Silva got injured. Ricardo Adinolfi. Played for River, played in Montevideo. He ended up playing in Israel later on. Pass picked off. A tangle of limbs, Zinho and Mendez going at it. That should have been his first yellow card. Now it could have been his second. Mendez gained positioning and Zinho did not like it. He pulled him down. And now Dunga. He's in hard on man. He says, don't do that to a little guy, number 11. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zinho and Dunga probably saw an elbow that referee did not see. In the 35th minute, a very good chance. Right from the top of the box, they'll take a free kick. Yet going down. Good chance for Enzo. Seca decoy behind the ball. and he tugs it just about a yard wide of the target. I see puts it over the wall, but off target. Tabarel might be, might have it covered. Enzo had played was playing back in River Plate in Buenos Aires after playing in Italy and France. Once again, Mendez, the victim of another foul. Again, it's Inyo living dangerously. Both are uh, Uruguay and Brazil involved in games with a lot of goals. In 1927, Uruguay defeated Bolivia 9-0. 57, Brazil defeated Colombia 9-0. Game with the most goals in 1942, Argentina defeated Ecuador 12-0. I can say defeated. 1945, Brazil 9 2 over Ecuador. Bands applauding the efforts of Edmundo. Getting by Moas and uh, goes down in a heap with a free kick. Give it to Brazil. Moas claimed he got ball. Without a doubt, one of the top forwards in the world back then, Edmundo. Hard to control. 
off the pitch. Yeah. On the pitch, hard to slow down. Yeah, exactly. Off the pitch, never stopped either. He later ended up playing in Italy, at Gimundo playing in Fiorentina. Well, comes February, and Gimundo disappeared. Nowhere to be found. And Florentina had a match, and well, he went to the carnival. <laughs> in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro, of course. <laughs> That's kind of a, a player at Gimundo. Like the animal. Got involved in brawls, got, in pro got major problems. One of those carnivals, he was drunk and he ran over a couple of people and killed them. And he ended up in jail for a couple of weeks also. So, But uh, he has been behaving the last couple of years, playing for Palmeiras, by the way. Still playing. And only matured enough. He was only 24 when this match was played. Captain Dunga. Well, just behind Juninho. Here comes Uruguay storming ahead. Enzo wants it back. You know, Otero should have taken a shot. Where else was he going to dribble, dribble into the 18? Ouch. Somehow, Senior's always getting hit. <laughs> there you go. Roberto Carlos. Really, effort from Edmundo. In a squirt foot, he can dribble past defenders twice, and he beats them and, and <laughs> right. tries again. It's too impressive at Gimundo. Close down by Janino. 1v1 cross still comes off. But ineffective as it's scooped up by Tapara. A story for Tafarel after uh, World Cup 94. They're leaving his hotel after the final game. He left his wallet in the taxi cab. Well, taxi cab, a soccer fan. Return it to the hotel. That was after they. He was already a champion. He was buying it. Was he went home? He was went to the malls to buy a gift for his family and lost his wallet. He came back to the hotel. There it was. Very nice. Mendez plays it square. Here's Gutierrez. Continues the switch. Poke towards the end line and no chance. Adinolfi pushing forward, but once the defenders realize he's going to lift the ball, chip it over them, their heads, they step up, and everybody would have been offside. To Leo. Great composure by Janino to bring it down. Spreads it out wide. Virginia. Back with Juninho. Settled by Roberto Carlos. Admundo. Again, elusive. Now continues his run through the area. Nearly found the seam. They had a wide open end window. Off the chest of Roberto Carlos. Now he looks to engage. Instead, 
pulls it out for Zinho. <laughs> Heel ball from Edmundo, wanted to go back with Zinho. Very simple, when the defenders of Uruguay close down and, and, and make a perfect line, it's a give and go, it's gonna break that up. Uh -huh. and Edmundo's always trying give and go. Switch by Dorta. Just outside the box, Uruguay building their attack. This could be an opportunity as the ref signals play on, but an innocent shot corralled by Tafara. Yeah, but it was number five, Sampaio, who closed them down, not allowing a shot from the top of the box. It was Francesco Lee who tries to bring it down. Well, he brings it down, but then he's closed down by Sampaio. Watch out. If Talio got on the other end, it could have been his second of the match. Tunga. Laps in concentration from Roberto Carlos. The 44th minute. I don't know. I don't think Uruguay can tie it before the end of half. When could have been a foul inside the 18. They're showing us. Munoz is going to have to make some changes. They have the tools on the bench. I forgot to mention Nunez by the coach, uh, coach Atletico Madrid, coach Tenerife, coach Las Palmas, Valencia, Rayo Vallecano, all Spanish teams. Granada and Valladolid also in Spain. Aggressive on the entry ball. It's off the end line. Going kick to Brazil as we approach the end of the opening 45. The second half of the white. Maybe make a couple of changes up front. Otero and Fonseca have been well controlled by the Brazilian defenders. Lucif run through. The center circle, but then a loose pass, and it's intercepted by Zinho. Roberto Carlos just inside his own half. Searching ball. Pushed out onto the flanks. An opportunity as we roll into stoppage time. No one had made the run to the back post. It was Tulio's side up the middle, according to the linesman. And it was a good call. And that's it for the first half. Brazil in front, one to nothing. Tulio at the half an hour mark. The difference in this contest so far. We'll step aside. Highlights from the first half of the 95 Copa America final coming up. Looking for their fifth Copa America title. Of course, Brazil in yellow moving from right to left at Centenario Stadium in Montevideo. So, and this is the summer of 95. Remember, in the summer of 94, Brazil clinched their fourth title. And Coach Barreira and the assistant was Mario Lobo Zagallo, who's now taken over the national team, made a few changes in the back line. Andre Cruz, number 14, who was playing for Napoli, very talented left footer, central defender. And Roberto Carlos, starting in the back line for Brazil, replacing Leonardo. Uh, also, Juninho Paulista, with number 10, earned a start in this lineup for Brazil. There you have Zinho, who's playing right now in the USL with Miami FC. There he was playing in Japan after the World Cup in 94. A lot of players from Brazil went to Japan. Zinho just celebrated his 40th birthday within the last week. The finals of the 37th edition of the Copa America. Join us as we relive the finals between Uruguay and Brazil next on Gold TV. Hello, everyone. The date was July 22nd, 1995. The venue, the famed Centenario Stadium in Montevideo, Uruguay. I'm glad you could be with us to relive a moment in a history, a classic matchup between Uruguay and Brazil. Alongside Rapu Insane, I'm Kelly O'Donnell. We step back in time to enjoy this match between two of the Colmebol Giants. In fact, this was a familiar scene in the 80s and 90s. Uruguay and Brazil facing off in the Copa America title. In fact, this was the third time in six Copa Americas that these two teams met in the championship. And the world champs Brazil, coached by Mario Lobo Zagallo, taking on Uruguay. Well, coached by Hector Nunez, 
Uruguay at home trying to clinch another Copa America for them. The lineup for this match in goal for Uruguay, Fernando Alves, Gustavo Mendes, Jose Herrera, Eber Moas, and Tabaré Silva in the back line. Gustavo Poyer, Alvaro Gutierrez holding Aguilari. Jose Herrera, by the way, played right back. He was switched to sweeper later on in this tournament by Nunez. Eber Moas is the other central defender. Tabaré Silva, the left back, holding in midfield Gutierrez, number five, and Poyet, number 11. Dorta and Francesco Lee trading behind Fonseca, number nine, who were playing for Roma. He ended up in uh, Juventus later on with number seven, Marcelo Tero. There you have Marcelo Tero asking for the ball. Ball set inside the area, but it's Caparel sprinting off of his line to collect quickly outlets to the far touch line. Intercepted by Uruguay, but quickly taken back and out contact. And the first foul of the match comes in the fourth minute. That's very good. And by the way, Arturo Bricio Carter is the referee from Mexico. He's assisted by Bomer Ferro from Ecuador and Adrian Gomez from Venezuela. Right it through inside the area near the end line. Not much room to operate. It's touched off, and it will be a corner kick. For Brazil. Diego Dorta, Enzo Francesco Lee creating behind Marcelo Tero and Daniel Fonseca, number nine, for coach Hector Nunez. Starting 11 for Nunez at home at Centenario. Let's see who Lobo Zagallo brings onto the pitch this legendary stadium. It's Claudio Taffarelli, goal, Jorginho Aldair, Andre Cruz, Roberto Carlos, and Dunga, Cesar Sampaio, Juninho and Zinho. Up front, the animal, Edgimundo, next to Tulio. Uruguay beat Brazil in the 83 Copa America final. Brazil returned the favor in 1989. In 95, essentially the rubber match of this series. How did it turn out? We'll get to the kickoff next on Goal TV. We've taken a step back in time to relive the 1995 Copa America final between Uruguay and Brazil. Uruguay looking for their 14th Copa America championship and doing so. It would tie Argentina for the most ever championships won in South America. Brazil. There's a young Juninho debuted for Brazil in a friendly in London against England. Brazil won 3 0. So Claudio Tafarel is the goalkeeper. He was still playing in Brazil before traveling to Italy, play for Parma in Serie A. He was playing for Atletico Mineiro. Uh, right back, Jorginho, who had still Cafu on the bench, was playing in Japan. Aldair, the veteran, played until he was 40 years old for Roma. Andre Cruz and Roberto Carlos, the back line. In midfield holding, Cesar Sampaio with number five, and Dunga, you see the young Roberto Carlos. Dunga, the coach uh, today for Brazil. Zinho and Juninho, the playmakers, the Animal Legimundo with number seven with center forward Tulio. Now for Uruguay, coached by Hector Nunez, a veteran coach who made most of his career coached in Spain, had Fernando Alves in goal. Right back, Gustavo Mendes. In the middle, Jose Herrera, who played for Cali.